the longest lunar eclipse this century. At the end of July, the Earth's getting the lengthiest lunar eclipse of the century. According to NASA, Earth creates several shadows during an eclipse. The primary ones are called the penumbra and the umbra. During a lunar eclipse, the moon enters the umbra with its color changing to dark red. These occur when the sun, moon, and Earth are in perfect alignment with each other. Writing on EarthSky.org, astronomer Bruce McClure says the lunar eclipse on July 27th will also be an apogee and moon when the Earth is at its farthest point from the moon. According to data from NASA, the eclipse will last 1 hour, 42 minutes, and 57 seconds. McClure writes this will be the century's longest lunar eclipse. The celestial event will be viewable from most of Africa, the Middle East, as well as Central, East, and Southeast Asia. So if you're in Europe or the US or Canada, tough luck. Here's more on the moon. Long day. New research shows that days on Earth are getting longer as the moon slowly spirals away from us. Due to gravitational forces between Earth and its satellite, the moon moves away at a rate of 3.82 centimeters per year, causing our planet's rotation to slow. According to NASA, Earth currently completes a full rotation on its axis every 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. But researchers using astrochronology on geological rock layers found that when the moon was closer to Earth 1.4 billion years ago, a day was just over 18 hours. The length of a day has grown 175 thousandth of a second on average per year and is expected to continue at this rate for the next millions or billions of years. The moon will eventually stop moving when it reaches a stable distance from Earth. When this happens, the two will be tidally locked, rotating at the same pace, with the moon visible from only one side of Earth. Of course, that's assuming either of them survive the sun's destructive red giant phase. Woman sues NASA so she can keep moon dust. A Tennessee woman is preemptively suing NASA in order to keep a vial of moon dust allegedly given to her by Neil Armstrong. According to the Cincinnati Enquirer, the lawsuit was filed by Laura Murray Chico on June 6 at the U.S. District Court in Kansas to decide who legally owns the dust. The woman is challenging NASA's 2011 court case declaration that private citizens cannot own lunar material. Chico says in a lawsuit that her father was a friend of Neil Armstrong and that when Armstrong was an aerospace engineer professor at the University of Cincinnati, he gave the vial to her as a gift. The lipstick-sized vial also came with a note that said to Laura Ann Murray, Best of luck, Neil Armstrong, Apollo 11. Well, good move, Laura. Now the whole world knows that you have this moon dust, which you definitely could have kept no problem had you only kept your trap shut. Water on the moon could fuel extended missions. Researchers at Brown University believe the moon's interior could be packed full of water. Water is found at the moon's poles, and scientists believe it exists there as a result of hydrogen brought by solar wind. However, according to a new study, magma eruptions from the moon's interior billions of years ago trapped water inside tiny beads of glass found in lunar rock. Satellite data collected by a lunar orbiter shows that these water-trapping glass beads are widespread on the moon's surface. Researchers have concluded that these water deposits are the result of magma that came from deep within the moon, meaning its interior must therefore contain water. Just how much water, however, is a question that no one can answer right now. But the researchers say future missions to the moon could potentially extract water from its surface, which would open the door to longer stays up there. New research reckons Earth birthed the moon. Ever wondered how the moon got up there? The most prominent lunar formation theory holds that the moon was formed when a Mars-sized object named Theia hit Earth billions of years ago. A cocktail of rock and metal erupted from both celestial bodies, mixing together to birth the moon. New research posits that a collision with something did occur, but instead created a giant donut-like spinning mass of vaporized rock called Synestia. Researchers believe the moon was fashioned inside this, potentially over hundreds of years by atmospheric pressure, extreme heat, and rock and then it just sort of popped out. Anybody up for some lunar cave diving? Scientists this week may have come across something that could lead to the first ever human outpost in space. A large and cavernous lava tube was this week confirmed to exist beneath the surface of the moon. 
These tubes are volcanic underground passages formed by flowing lava to funnel this substance. Once the flow stops, the tube remains with features similar to a cave. The discovery was made by a team of Japanese and American scientists who used data from the Selene and Grail spacecraft to acoustically map the enormous lava tube. The chasm is around 100 meters wide and 50 kilometers long and located in the Marius Hills region of the celestial body. It could provide shelter to astronauts during moon missions, protecting them from dangerous cosmic radiation. This could potentially allow for the development of a lunar exploration base. And that moon base, Homo sapiens, could very well lead to a human colony. Look who's going back to the moon. The Indian Space Research Organization has announced plans to send a rover to the moon early next year, nearly a decade after its first lunar journey met with mixed success. The spacecraft for India's Chandrayaan-2 moon mission is comprised of an orbiter, a lander and a rover, which will first slingshot around Earth before going into lunar orbit. The lander will attempt a controlled or soft landing near the moon's south pole, while the orbiter travels around the moon. Once on the surface, the lander will take thermal measurements and deploy the six-wheeled rover to explore the lunar terrain. Among the things the mission will pay close attention to are abrasive particles known as lunar dust, which pose a significant challenge to human colonization of the moon. The Chandrayaan-2 will be carried into space by the GSLV Mark II rocket and is scheduled to launch from an island in the Bay of Bengal in March 2018. India will carry out the final testing phase for the spacecraft in the coming weeks. The program's budget for the mission is relatively small, at only $93 million.